to Today Pass. You're joined by Stig. Hello. Oh! <laughs> and you're joined by me, Scott. Now, what we're going to do is um, we're starting on the Ford Bridge Road. We're Ashford Driving Test Centre. Remember, this is Middlesex, not to be confused with Kent. And we're going to head this direction. Now, it's quite common for you to start your driving test facing this direction. So we're going to show you the common way to go. This will be a different route to the previous one. We hope you enjoy it. Leave a like on the video if you do. And Stiggy, you ready? Steady, go. Okay, just when before you, before you yep. move off on this road, remember it's a busy road. Do your observations properly. And if there's cars coming, don't take the risk, better to wait, okay? Okay, so clarify. So this is quite a busy road, so you must be extremely cautious when you move off. Okay, yeah, busy road, take your time. Uh, what I'd like to say is if you feel like you could walk out into a road, this is a safe time to drive out into a road. It's a good way of assessing um, a safe opportunity and really kind of simplifying um, all junctions in general, giving you a good way of knowing when it's safe for all junctions or roads to drive out. Okay, I'm going to have to call out some um, instructions or directions for Stiggy here. So what we're doing is we're getting to the roundabout ahead. So the first roundabout, straight on please, Stig. Uh, look ahead, you can see the warning triangles and you can see the circles. Circles are a good way of identifying exactly where the roundabout starts. Here we have the roundabout, slowing down quite a lot here as the visibility is very impaired on the right. We almost had to come to a stop to actually see clearly into that road on the right. So that's very important to bear in mind if you're doing your test here. At the roundabout, I'd like you to turn left, please, Stig, first exit. Following the signs to Kingston. Kingston! Okay. Now, this will take us on to Staines Road West. Last time we went east. This is a different way. This is the west way. West side is the best side. It takes you on to... Scott's Road, okay? So what we're going to do is after the second major junction, so we haven't passed through the first major junction, so the first one is way down there, okay? And then the second junction is here. So when we get to our second major junction, We've got to do the fourth left. All right, so that was an interesting situation. I had a bicycle there, and what we're doing is we're changing the actual lane to give the bicycle as much room as possible. So to do a lane change, we must do our mirrors, signal accordingly, and make sure there's no traffic before changing the lane. We've got 50 here. We've got a speed change to 40. I think I just chucked Stiggy's memory there of the speed change, because as soon as I said that, it's on the brakes. But you can see the sign on the left was hidden behind the tree. Yes, there's one on the right. I mean, really, it's nice to have two. Keep your eyes peeled for those speed changes, especially on dual carriageways. So this would be the first big junction, and we're going to the second big junction. But then it says fourth left, which is a bit confusing. So we're looking for Scott's Road. So we want to go to Scott's Road. Fourth, no, that won't be it. There's Scott's Avenue, Scott's Road. That's the second junction. All right, okay, so first, uh, second, one, two, one, two, three, four. Scott's Avenue. It says Scott's Road here, but it's got to be Scott's Avenue. Okay, so you can see we're on a very long road here. We're doing these videos to try and help you guys out, calling out the names of the roads, trying to give everybody a little bit more insight to exactly where we are, so that when you're trying to follow these videos, or you might already know the roads, this can be more beneficial for you to start to learn the area. So we're still going straight stick. This is going to be our second major junction. So you see the traffic lights here, where we had our sign, second major junction, and then we're taking the fourth left. So if you're on a test, your examiner's just going to be quiet this whole road, 
seeing that you've taken into, the, into consideration everything that's happening, but mainly it's the speed changes in the traffic lights, pedestrians, so on and so forth. We had a bicycle earlier. And we're going to take the fourth road on the left. Okay, Stig? How are you with your counting? Can you count up to four? I think it's the next one. You think it's the next one? This is the third one. This is the second major junction. Now we're taking the fourth road on the left. Okay. So... For me, there's a tiny one on this, but I don't see it in reality. So one, the drive. Two, I don't know if that what that road's called. Three, Alexandra Road. Four, just before the next major junction. Can you see the traffic lights yeah. all the way down there? It's going to be just before that, turning turning left onto Scotts Avenue. See me? Do you see me? <laughs> I got two roads. I know they're called Scotts now. Okay, so then we go on to Scott's, and then we go second exit. Sud Sunbury Cross, Staines Road West, Sunbury Cross. Yeah? All right. Yeah, I think we just follow it out. So if we pass the first road, that'd be the first one. So one, this is where our counting comes into play. Two. Two. All right, even though we've got a 40 mile an hour road, you might not be doing 40 because we're looking out for the road. Three. Three. So there's no white lines there. That's just a quick fit. So we're looking for the paint, looking for the white lines. See some white lines there? Number four. So obviously this is a road that's going to be used for doing your manoeuvre. Uh, ooh, quite a sharp turn there, isn't it? And into a and reduced visibility. So you want to do that quite a slow speed and really look into the new road, be prepared to stop. Okay, Stig, look at the width of this road as well. So this is really going to test people's ability for mirror checks, change of direction, because we're having to do a little slalom, aren't we, through these parked cars. It's actually quite a tight road, especially where those parked cars are. Okay, Stig, so I'd like to pull up on the left for me, please. And then when it's safe, drive on and take the next road on the right, Scott's Way. Why are we taking all your roads? Ah, excuse me. Yeah, I don't know why we're taking all our roads. Uh, one sec, uh, one left. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, take the right road on the right, please. End of the road left. Yeah, I think end of the road left, yeah. So at the end of the road, turn left. Now, you could be asked to do some parking. I was tempted to ask Stig to do some parking, but we've done that on other videos. So if you want to go check out the maneuvers, just go to the channel playlist and look for maneuvers, and you'll have all the advice there. Now, Stig, that was a very difficult turn, wasn't it? Because we had very reduced visibility there, and cars could be coming quite quickly on this road. So when Stig made the choice to actually drive onto this road, um, it was very good. Uh, we should be following this road until we get to a roundabout. Um, but then, as Stig made that choice to go, there was no car coming. You saw the car as you made your choice and you were emerging out onto the road. At that point, you must keep going. Try to build your speed as safely as you can, but do keep going. Because now, if you stop in the middle of the road, just keep going straight for me, please, Stig. If you stop... Yep. If you stop at the middle of the road, you're just going to block the road. So it's not a safe place to stop, i.e. you must keep going. All right. So um, here we are. Just dual carriageway, residential road, dual carriageway, residential road. 
it's not a bad area. I, th- I actually quite like Ashford. It's quite a wide road, nice sort of roads. The the last one was a bit tight, which you're going to get everywhere. All residential roads are going to be fairly narrow. It's just something you can't really avoid. And um, one of the things you can avoid, or some areas you can avoid, are the big dual carriageway roundabouts. That's what I tend to try and put my students into this kind of environment to make it a little bit less um, anxious for them on their driving test to try and help them feel a little bit more at ease. Uh, but for most people, this isn't this isn't the case. You can't avoid them, so you've got to do plenty of practice. Now, the dual carriageway roundabouts in this area seem to be very relaxed, quite a large area, good visibility for the dual carriageway roundabouts. The lane markings are nice. Um, like I said, it's not too busy, so you've got opportunities to drive out. Some other driving test centers in dual carriage roundabouts, like South Hall, as an example, uh, are just non stop traffic, and getting the chance to go is near impossible. And when you do get that chance to go, like Stick did early, you've got to commit and just floor it, even, and just take off. So it's another good thing that we've introduced the automatic cars. We have the power in these vehicles to help you get out at these junctions which can be a good thing you know less stress you know better environment for doing your driving test okay so we're coming towards the traffic lights here stick i'd like you to turn left at the traffic lights please so this is where we're going to do roughly this distance 10 to 5 car lengths mirror checks there nicely done stick interior and left exterior mirror check signal after checking the mirrors and then position if you need to change lanes accordingly to do your turn. Coming into the new road, we're checking the stop lines there in case there was a pedestrian crossing. Now you'll know you need to stop if there's a big white solid line, that's a stop line. It was safe, we kept going. And now I'm looking for speed limit signs. I haven't seen any so far, so I'm assuming this is a 30 mile an hour road. I don't feel like it'd be any safer if we went faster than this. We're at 30, this feels comfortable. Look at the bends that we have coming up. We've got the solid line on the right hand here. This means no overtaking for clear reasons, as in going straight into an oncoming vehicle in the oncoming lane. So the lines are there for safety. Obviously, look at this. So this is a case and point there. He did actually just overtake the scooters, the oncoming vehicle, just before that solid line started. But you can see if he did it any later, clearly it's going to come over that line into our direction with poor visibility, very high risk of an accident there. So pay attention to road markings. I have seen some students try to overtake cyclists over solid lines. This, although the highway code kind of says if the traffic's traveling slower than X amount of speed and it's a solid line, it is permitted to overtake. But I would not encourage this on your driving test because you're taking a risk. Wait until the solid line comes to an end. It's not going to be that long. Then assess, then take the chance if you have it to then overtake the cyclist or whatever. If you are, on a second note, if you are passing any live animals, like the horses as an example, you must give them very wide clearance, even up to the width of a car, roughly two to three meters. Uh, this might be introduced towards cyclists as well, but I would like to try and encourage the people, um, give cyclists a little bit more than a meter if you can, you know, per- permitting the circumstances you're in. Okay, we're almost back at the driving test center. We've got a couple more roundabouts to go, but looking down the road here, we have a dad cross crossing with his kid there. Stiggy's done a very good safe reaction there. Immediately put the brakes on. I was going to address the pedestrian crossing because I thought the dad might go to the pedestrian crossing. However, Stig was aware that pedestrian very close to the edge of the pavement, saw the body language of the parent picking up the child and then permitting to walk out into the to the road. Obviously, Stig's noticed. Check the interior mirror for change of speed. Start to uh, slow the vehicle down just so that you show the examiner that you're also taking into account who's behind you. At the roundabout stick, second exit straight ahead, look at the width of the road as it's narrowing here. Not only do we want to reduce our speed for the roundabout, look at this, brilliant, 
somebody pulling out from the right, another person opening their door on the left. Could you get any more reason for slowing down? So yes, there's plenty of reasons. Not only straight second exit, good visibility there. Nice again on these roundabouts, just lovely open roundabouts, okay? So not only have you got to slow down for the junction, but you're also slowing down for those hazards on the parked cars. I'm just super pleased that that actually happened. So a lot of time we talk about it, take the second exit turning right on the round, third exit turning right on the roundabout, please stick back to the test center. Nice and open again, beautiful roundabouts. Like I was saying earlier, we're approaching the second exit, mirror, mirror, to the left, signal left, and we're spiraling off, relaxing the steering to coming out to the left. So like I was saying earlier, a lot of time you talk about these vehicles pulling out, you talk about the doors opening, it doesn't happen. And that time I was talking about it, both of them happened at the same time. Um, we're back at the test center now, Stig. We're going to go for our VIP parking, please, okay? So I'd like to take the next road on the left, Nice and gentle here, please, because we're shortly going to be turning right into the one-way street and stopping by the test centre. So just into the right-hand side here for me, please, Stig. And where would you like to park? Because you have plenty of opportunities. Pull up in a safe place here. Stig's pulling up on the right. Totally convenient. All marked out parking bays here. And we have the signs. Raised curb. Nice area to stop in. So mirrors and signals. If you pull up on the right, Make sure you do it nice and slow and gentle. And there you are, switch the engine off. That's the end of your test stick. And congratulations, I'd like to say you've passed. From your assistants here, from myself, because I don't know if you would have spotted that speed change, okay? All right. Anyways, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you have, and stay safe. Stay tuned, because we're going to be doing a lot more of these videos. See you next time.